a final set of rules to learn about debits and credits are for revenues and expenses. So what are our rules of debits and credits? Well, we can remember it using a LONRE. So the rules are assets, liabilities, owner's equity, negative owner's equity, revenues and expenses. Or if you prefer to sort of change the order a little bit, you can remember it using a loaner. See the description of this video. I'll put a link in to a nice summary video that goes for two minutes with all of these rules. I'm going to use the ones on the left, uh, but it doesn't matter. But the rules are assets go up on the debit side, so therefore liabilities and owner's equity must go up on the credit side because assets must equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Therefore, when we learned about what negative owner's equity is, which is drawings, that must be the opposite of owner's equity, which makes sense. And that's where we're up to. So what we're going to do now is learn that revenues go up on the credit side and expenses go up on the debit side. So we can just take that as, as is, if you can remember that as part of a loan rate. But I guess we kind of want to ask why. So, and it's all to do with this. Let's take owner's equity here. So the rule for owner's equ equity was it went up on the credit side and down on the debit side. Now, if we were to look at the definition of revenues, which is from a couple of chapters ago, but the definition was this. It's an increase in assets or a decrease in liabilities that results in an increase in owner's equity, which arises in the course of the ordinary activities of the business. If we could just summarize that and go, well, hang on, it just says here, it results in an increase in owner's equity. Uh, what about expenses? Well, expenses set, there. the definition is a decrease in assets or an increase in liabilities that results in a decrease in owner's equity, which arises in the course of the ordinary activities of the business. And the key part are these two bits here. So it says here, right, revenues increase owner's equity. So therefore, if owner's equity goes up on the credit side, then so should revenues. And it says here, expenses decrease owner's equity. So it makes sense if owner's equity goes up on the credit side, that expenses would go up on the debit side because that will decrease owner's equity effectively. So knowing that, and again, I uh, said in earlier videos, you don't even don't need to remember the why. Like why? Why debit? Why credit? Just remember the rule. And the rule, a lonre, a loaner, or however you want to remember it, and then you can apply it to these transactions. So let's take the first one. Provided services for $700 on account, so that means credit, to a client. So an account that would be affected is accounts receivable. That's what it's called when a client owes me money for goods or services provided because they haven't paid yet. So that is an asset. And from my perspective as the business, that asset is increasing. And the rule says an asset goes up on the debit side. What else though? Because our rules of double entry accounting say at least two accounts must always be affected. I've only got one and my debits must always equal my credits and I don't have any credits. And that's because, what do we call this? We call this a sale. Sale is a type of revenue account and my sales are increasing. So the rule here says when a revenue increases, that should be a credit. And there we go, I've got one debit with one credit. So that was when we provide a service, which is actually in year 11 accounting. What about in year 12, we need to deal with when we sell a good and a good is a physical object like a pair of shoes or a video game or something like that. And that involves both a revenue and an expense. So let's take a basic example here. A sports store, so this is it here, the business, sells a pair of runners, these Nikes here, for $200 to a customer. Okay? The customer gives the business $200. Simple. So how would we put that in our accounting equation? Well, we would say the business has in more uh, of an asset called cash. And it just made a sale called uh, a revenue, sorry, called a sale, sales or revenues increase owner's equity. And there we go, there were no liabilities, beautiful. But the problem here is how much profit did we make on the business, on the actual transaction? Because we did get $200 for selling the shoe, but we had to give up the shoe. And that means we had to buy the shoe originally. So the firm's profit isn't $200. What actually happens is because the before the firm sold the shoe, we bought the shoes, let's just say for $50. So here's the, here's the supplier, in this case Nike, selling to our business that shoe for 50 bucks. And then we learn that, yeah, we sell it to the customer for 200. And what we've got here is the $50 the firm paid for the shoes. Now that was probably not today. That was probably like a month ago, right? It's just been sitting in the storeroom. So it's just sitting there as inventory. We had to give up inventory and that becomes an expense called cost of sales. So what really happened there? Well, let's go through the whole thing again. Assets went up called cash. Sales went up. That's increases on his equity. But what just happened then is I had to give up some inventory. Inventory is an asset. So that is decreasing an asset. 
And what we said was that is going to become an expense called cost of sales. And we just learned earlier that the definition of an expense is it decreases owner's equity. So this expense here called cost of sales has the effect of decreasing owner's equity by 50 bucks. And if I average all that out and sort of do the, the ups and downs, I've got assets going up by 200, but down by 50, that's 150. Nothing happened to liabilities and owner's equity also increased 150. So that, that all balances. But what we've got to do is we've got to kind of look at that and go, well, what was my revenue? Revenue was the actual sale. That was $200. What was the expense? That was $50. The expense is called the cost of sale. Now, what is that? Uh, and we'll learn this in more detail. I think it's in chapter eight or chapter nine. But for now, we'll say this is the value of the inventory that has been sold. So the business couldn't make the sale today unless it bought that inventory last month. So an expense needs to be recorded for each sale. So therefore, our profit would have been $150, the revenue of 200 minus the expense of 50. What would that look like here? Well, let's take, this is the most complicated example for the year, except for it doesn't have GST. We're gonna add that in in chapter four. But for now, let's say, sold goods for $1,000 cash and the cost price of those goods was 600. Let's take the sale bit. So we got more cash and that's an asset. That's increasing. The rule says that should be a debit of 1,000. Why did we get that cash? We got that cash because we made a sale. Sales are a revenue and they're increasing. The rules of debits and credits say a revenue increasing is a credit. One debit, one credit. However, we just learned that we now have an expense called cost of sales. And that expense is increasing. When an expense increases, that's a debit. What did we have to give up to make this sale? We have to give up inventory. Inventory is an asset. It's decreasing. So when an asset decreases, that's a credit. And there we go. That's quite complicated. It's four entries, but let's have a look at our, our rules. Our rules say at least two accounts must be affected. We've got four, so that's good. All our debits must equal our credits. And we can see for every debit, 1,600, we've got a credit of 1,600. So that is actually all good. Let's just deal with an expense though. So let's take a basic expense. Wages of $3,000 was paid for with cash. Wages are an expense. They're increasing, and the rules of debits and credits say an expense increasing is a debit. What did we give up to pay that expense? We gave up cash. Cash is an asset. I'm, I've got less of it, and the rule says when an asset goes down, that is a credit of $3,000. So there's some basic examples. Like I said, there's no GST yet. We're going to add that in slowly in the next chapter. But fundamentally, we can now process any revenue or any expense just because we know our rules of debits and credits. And just remember, when we sell a good, there is also an expense called cost of sales. And we need to treat that just like we would any other expense by applying our rules of debits and credits here.